Hi everybody at CSIS, you know we're in Lubeck, we're on North Lubeck Road, and I'm here with one of the brothers from Duck Dynasty. Um, he's going to swear he isn't, but he keeps getting people to ask him. Um, uh, we're just here with WL, those are your initials. WL, what do you do? Well, wild side guide service chief, operator and owner. I take people out to kill critters, catch fish, see animals. Maybe Russell a Bigfoot, pat a bear, who knows? The, the, we'll get into the bobcat story in another time, but there's a there's a bobcat story involved. But listen, we're going squatching tonight. You say, uh, what kind of noises are you hearing out there, and what's going on back there? Where, where are the noises coming from? From the back shore, which is about a mile from here. Yeah. Uh, and it's... Some wild shit. It, there's gurgling, burbling, howling, squealing, splashing. There's some shit going on out there that's pretty wild. There's some stuff going on out there that's pretty wild. Um, so do you think uh, possibly somebody's, because you know we have a reward out there for Squatch. We want somebody to subdue Squatch, maybe tie him up, maybe slightly against his will. No shooting. Oh man, you mean like... You can't shoot him. Okay. You got, and there's like a, there's like a $5 cash reward from CSIS if you get that. Uh -huh. um, we're going out there today investigating. Have you seen some crazy stuff out there in the woods? Yes, I have. Um, on occasion, I, I like a little of this stuff. The more of this I have, the, the more stuff I see. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I, okay. I have seen absolutely some of the wildest things you're ever going to see in the woods that people, you tell them you see it and they don't believe it. Crazy like, tracks? House cats playing with deer, uh, painted turtles riding on snapping turtles, cleaning the leeches out from underneath their legs. Uh, I just just wild animal interactions that hours and hours in the woods you get to see that most people would never ever believe. Now we're talking woods. Let's let's get some perspective. We're from Connecticut. How big are the woods we're talking about? We're, we're talking big. If you don't know where you're going, you're going to get lost. You ain't coming out until tomorrow morning. Do you measure them in acres or? Miles. Miles. So we're talking forest basically the size of Connecticut. And then some. It goes on up into Canada. Well, right now we're on a six mile long peninsula that has one main road that runs basically along the eastern coast of it. We're headed to the west coast. Yeah of the peninsula and that's where the crazy shit is so where the crazy stuff is where the noises are coming from has anybody got any business back there would you be back there in those woods at 9 30 at night no 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 nope. why not well because there's critters up there that 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 could be chewing on you know there's, there's bears bobcats coyotes yeah but we have the occasional mountain lion yeah we lion. know there's bears back there right well yeah yeah all right so he, we're gonna he's not back there no more no but he's, uh, he's got some <laughs> friends back there though there's kinfolk back there we're, we're serious this, this, is a, this is a big rascal this this fellow actually was one that had been in a fight with another bear his top jaw was broke from here to here and he couldn't eat he was a sick bear he was trying to break in the house and uh that's not ever good for a bear especially no. up here they don't call animal control up here we ended up having to shoot him because he was trying to crawl through a window to yeah. get in the house to get that uh suet and bird feed yeah and uh done done this fellow a favor actually. and that that's what nature does listen nature doesn't have nursing homes you get you get your jaw smashed up that's pretty much the end of your life isn't it yeah he was he was living on out of garbage cans and and bird feeders is for about the only thing he was able to eat anymore and uh i mean he was severely he underweight up. really malnourished and, and he wasn't going to make it he, uh, he'd been uh he, he was either kicked by a moose or bit by another bear across here the side of his head here you can see where an, another bear had swiped him almost took his eye out and he'd also he had been uh, something, he had been bit through the leg, or shot through the leg, or, he, he was in high shape. So, he was basically at Walmart on Black Friday, uh, in Hartford, and, um, yeah, he was standing in line, and, and things didn't go well for him from there, so, but he, he might have got, and he might have got a Sony PlayStation, but that didn't end up so good for him. So, when an injury like this happens, multiple injuries, it ain't good, is it? 
No. You ain't going to survive the winter. No. Even if you hibernate. No. This, 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 that was this bear's last year. He was he was going to die a slow, grueling, painful death. Right. Instead of... Instead of being, you know... Hunted. Put down humanely. Yeah. If, you know, basically, you had to shoot him right through the window because he was coming in. And you can't have a 400-pound bear come in your house. Right. That's wounded and hungry. Right. Because I had Dave McCurdy over my house one time, and he wanted pizza, and it wasn't ready on time, and I had some beer, and I kind of had to do something very similar to him. <laughs> uh, it involved a garden rake and some some mace, but I finally did subdue him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so so Dave McCurdy, you know. Could have been. It could have ended up kind of like this for him, but instead we're still friends, and uh, I do still owe him a pizza. Uh huh. Yeah. You know Dave, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He told me about tracks. Uh huh. He told me about Bigfoot tracks behind his house. Did he? Have you seen any big tracks that you can't explain? No. Any weird sounds you can't explain? I hear weird stuff out here. All We're gonna the get time. this. Have you ever felt like you've been watched and you felt so uncomfortable in a certain section of woods that you had to leave? No, because I'm always armed. Right. But which we never are. We don't do that. Right. If you're gonna subdue our Sasquatch and you want that five dollar reward, that has to be unarmed. Right. That's what this is for. We're gonna do this tonight. <laughs> so we're on location. <laughs> Well, where where are we gonna where are we? I know it is. I listen. I we're having fun. We're on vacation, people at CISA, so we're having fun. So, so do try this at home. Where are the sounds? What do you call the area where the sounds are coming from? The I believe they're coming from the island in the middle of the of uh, South Bay. Right. There's a there's a pretty big bay out here, right. and there's a island out there. It's right. also a seal nursery. Right. So I don't know if... There's a plenty forage base over there. The, oh, yeah. I right. Mean, a seal would... Not stand a chance if a squash grabbed it. No. How it, big do the seals awful get? It'd be nutritious meal. How, these seals get about 600 pounds. So that's, that's, that's going to last you. You know, if you're a squash, that's like... All right, I'm ready for one or two, three, maybe more. That, yeah. that, that's like three P&G meatball subs. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> P&G on Franklin Avenue. You owe us a you owe us a meatball sub for our field guide, L H. So we're gonna go out there. We'll see you out there. Here we are at Spike Lands Down East Coastal Conservancy, part of the Cubs Cook Trail System. About a mile long trail to the back shore, what we call. Uh, this used to be property of the University of New Hampshire and a fellow named Radcliffe Pike, who was a horticulturist, had grafted trees from many different species. It's an experimental forest, and it's, it's, it's got some pretty crazy stuff that goes on here. So come along here, and we'll show you what happens. Hey, and our friends there in Litchfield on the Governor uh, Orchards, this has got some rare apples for you. You know, we told you about the mica roots. Well, we're on. Now, what, we're squatching tonight, right? There's trees here that are the only ones in the world. Right. In, in, in this little patch of woods that we're going into right here. And can you eat these apples? Yeah. People like apples. Bigfoot's an upright hominid. We like apples. There, there's all kinds of different. There's, there's nut trees. There's fruit trees. There's all kinds of uh, uh, coniferous trees in here that are uh, all experimental. There's like... There's a forest There's space. Sitka pines that grow in here. There's, there's trees that are growing here that ain't supposed to be able to grow here. They ain't supposed to be able to grow up in here. Well, we're gonna work. We're gonna work on his accent. We're gonna show you something. We're gonna show you one of them. there scratch crotches too. Uh, one of them. What is it? A scratch crotch. A scratch crotch. We're looking for a scratch crotch. Thesis. <laughs> Pretty sure we're gonna come up with one of those tonight. Okay, so we're about to go into this. Pike Lands Arboretum and Pike Lands Now Preserve. We are squatching on location. We are one of the with one of the world's greatest Sasquatch guides. It's dark out here. It's about eight o'clock, about seventy degrees. Uh, it's um, it's sometime. We'll give you the date. Let's go squatching. Twenty first. It's 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 August twenty first. Thank you, guide. <laughs> He's a natural, by the way. Uh, and check him out. Send him your reports. We'll give you some information. What's the name of the guide service? 
Wild Side Guide Service. Wild Side Gu Guide Service in Down East Maine. But, Check it so out. So you want a nighttime investigation? Well, here we are. It's dark out. Ain't nobody around here. Nobody's got... Hey, guys, anybody got any business back here right now? No, absolutely not. No business at all. There's more bugs than than the Amazon rainforest back here. So you, you just wouldn't be hanging out back here, would you? Nope. You wouldn't be hanging out back here. You'd have to be drunk or crazy, one or the other. We're both, so... If Radcliffe was a pike, would you say he'd be a northern pike? No, he was a smuggling pike. Radcliffe was a smuggling pipe, uh, pike, so... That's how the pike family made their money. They were rum runners and wool smugglers. Yeah. They would set offshore with a load of rum and wool and yeah. wait for an American boat to come out and pick it up and bring it back. Smuggle come it across the border, run, run from the coast guard. Because uh, one thing we know here down in Down East Maine, prohibition doesn't work of anything. So don't do it. If you know what I'm saying. The trunk's like that. No. No, that's... Or that big. That's just an amazing tree. So is it P-I-K-E? Yeah, it is, right? Yeah, it is. Pike like the fish. Okay, so Pike, did you know that Commander Pike... Um, in the early days of the English Freemason Society, and I know because I'm a Mason. Zebulon? Might be. I'll have to look into it. General Pike. He uh, he was pretty controversial with some of the stuff he did, but he wrote some of the, the same initiation rituals that are still being used today. Zebulon Pike, he was in the forest. In it. Hold on. Say that now. There's a coyote track there with a skunk track in it. He wouldn't be tracking a skunk, would he? No, nope, there's a small skunk track right here. And here's the toes from the coyote. And it's a big coyote. And why is it alone? It's a, it's a male. Oh, it's a male. Is he, uh, is he aggressive? Yeah, he's aggressive. Not in a good mood right now. I don't blame him. We're on him, though, right? We're going to hunt him down? If, you come, if I see him, he's dying. He's... If, <laughs> He's, a, he's definitely an endangered species. I have a permit to hunt him at night. Well, we don't do that at sea. So he does, because that's what you do here, right? Yeah, because they eat their deer. Because they eat their deer. Right out. By the way, we're here today with K.H., the guy's wife, and she's going to do a Sasquatch howl for us later. Right? You don't know what you're missing, don't you? What we have is just a small game trail. Probably raccoons, skunks, porcupines, rabbits. They're all traveling through here eating all the fallen fruit on the ground. And as you can see, there's plenty on these trees to fall. It's early. This food supply will last well up into snowfall before it's finally gone some some of these apples fall early some will fall late but there'll be uh there'll be animals pawing through the snow eating these apples right up until mid-december or so right so we uh it, it's an exceptional year for fruit up here what do they eat after december after december all of the uh like your your coons, your skunks, your bears, all those animals that go into hibernation and it's mostly your your hooved animals and your predators that, that stay out after after uh the big freeze comes. What do the hooved animals eat? They'll, they'll go along, they'll eat these blackberries like the end of these blackberries right here. Okay, so that's edible. They'll, they'll be dead, yep, they'll they'll chew these right down until they get oh, about that size or so. 
they'll, they'll browse on them. They'll eat all of the, the ends of the apple uh, limbs. So they're pruning. That actually benefits the plant. Oh, yeah. Because you, this is why you have young, vital growth and not a big, thorny mess like we get in Connecticut. They, they Horticulturists can... will actually cut those down about 18 inches off the ground. So the deer are doing the same thing that paid people are paid to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The deer, they, they mow them right down. They'll come in here and they'll eat all these raspberry vines. Some of these are raspberry and some of these are blackberry. And you know, they don't like to grow good next to each other. No, they don't. They do not like the raspberries and blackberries are not good to grow near each other. They have to be separated by 60 feet. And as you can see, I mean... We got a forge base here. It's going to be... A, yeah, it, it's an exceptional year for fruit. Last year was a terrible year. Mm. That, that is good. Cesus, that is good. If you come to Down East Maine just for that alone, and we're going to give you the cell phone name, address, a DNA sample, and foot tr um, footprint tracks. We're going to get a plaster cast of our guide so you know how to track him down. And I guarantee you, I won't answer you back. But and he definitely will. He has a zero response rate on Facebook. I'm electronically challenged. I don't believe in computers. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Do you see any reason why it couldn't exist? No. There you go. You remember Tubby? Yeah. Tubby down there at the boat launch? Yeah. Well, we're pretty convinced here at CSIS he was a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a poem about him. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. It goes something like this. I know Bigfoot exists because my cousin Tubby was a Bigfoot. How do I know he was a Bigfoot? Because the History Channel used to follow him around, take blurry photographs, collect hair samples, and plaster cast of his footprints and swear that he actually existed. And since I know him, I know Bigfoot's real. Uncle Tubby, that's for you. So this leads me to believe, but our guide is saying, what did you call this? Uh, it's, it's a scratch crotch nest. This is a scratch crotch nest. Obviously, we're having fun. It's out of here. I'm sorry. Or a land beaver. Or a land beaver. Don't even, you know what? They don't know. <laughs> don't get spleeny. I might have to tackle the guide today. He's getting spleeny on me. And for you people in Connecticut, I'm not even going to define that for you what spleeny is. You have to come up here and figure it out for yourself there. Look, the further in the woods you go, the bigger the jug gets. <laughs> we're, we, we, our guide might not get us, get us back out of here, but that's all right. Tell us. I do know this. Where? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. If you want to find mushrooms, come to Lubeck, look me up. I will take you to find more mushrooms than you've ever seen in your life, more varieties. And I'm not sure what they all are. I'd like to know. So come on up and, and, and teach. I'll show you where they are and you can teach me what they are. And I'll bet you we have some undiscovered species here. That's what we do. Are we recording? <coughs> All right, this is a, a burl tree, we call them. This is a spruce burl, just an abnormal growth in the tree where a limb or something broke off at one time and it, it grew kind of funky. You see here? The, there is like amazing different grains inside of this. They're, they're, they're great. They're super strong. They're, they're good for like making cob bowls with cups. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty cool. You can do a lot of different things with them. You see this wood in the finest furniture and the finest cars. This grain will try to protect this tree from infection so it grows twisty and round and that's what makes it a hard grain and that's what makes it ornamental. I finish wood for a living. This here, what they'll do is they'll cut the top the top and the bottom off. They'll take this, they'll put it on a lathe or something like mm -hmm. that. Probably I'm looking at two different bowls or inlay wood. It's a valuable, valuable find right here. This is a this is a little one. That's a little one. This is a this is just a little teeny one. So I mean, we have we have some that weigh probably four or five hundred pounds. See that? There we go, Cesus. We're bringing you the goods tonight. 
Well, I'm not really sure exactly. I am. So deep inside these recesses, this this looks like obviously some kind of West Coast pine that has yeah. no business here in Down East Mean. But deep inside here, like any pine cone, will be these ones are a little moist. They've been on the ground. There's a pine nut. And that's when you see the little pieces left over from the squirrels and the strip bark. That's what they're eating in the late winter. The pine nuts. Highly nutritious. They are edible yourself. And according to Mick Dodge, you can use them as toilet paper. It's definitely voicey here. Move with the guide. She's going to do a call later for some kind of foghorn call. We're calling the fog monster. We're going to get her on tape. Now. It's creepy back here. How much you charge for a splotching tour? Seven thousand dollars. So for you know we'll probably get your deal for like sixty five hundred because we know him. <laughs> um you you got you got a squatch license, right? Oh yeah. You got a CSIS approved, so not just a squatch license, CSIS approved. Oh yeah, yeah. He's up to date. Unlike Ashley. Yep. No wait. Oh, no, unlike Justin, who's definitely had his license revoked. That squatty head lighthouse sacred to our family. Yeah, no, it's fucking with it. <laughs> they are active at night, aren't they? Yeah. Do they get aggressive? Uh, believe it or not, the bears of Maine are, are really not. They've learned. The only way you're going to get have a problem with the bear of Maine is if you create it. If you create the problem, if there's a sow and some cubs and you go and try to mess with the cubs, the sow will kick your ass. So in Connecticut, they're not aggressive, they just don't give a shit about you because nobody hunts them. Uh oh, we got some. Well, that's... <clears throat> They have a lot of food in Connecticut. I mean, they, they do. They do here too. They have more food here probably actually than they do in Connecticut. In Connecticut, you have, you know, a lot of your corn fields right. and, and stuff like They'll that. They'll leave corn too for the animals. That's a pretty wild one. Isn't it? Oh, that fell off a tree. Wow, that's a cedar tree. Yeah. tapping as we've described this before is you know we're dealing with primates 
large primates that don't have a means, they don't have Wi-Fi, they don't have cell phones, they don't have cell phone towers. What they do have is this. And they can communicate vast distances through mathematics and sound. You want to wait for the Bigfoot to be able to pick up a stick and respond. You just heard communication. That was three. One, two. Not three successive. Three is a warning. Let's demonstrate three. Just warned them we're in the area. Where are we going, guide? We're headed down to Spur Beach. Spur Beach. Why Spur Beach? Spur Beach is a little beach that sticks out like Spur. Good enough reason. Stood here for more than a minute or two. The tide is now coming in. And about probably two minutes, the water would be up to our ankles. Right now, it's a large big high tide cycle the tide is going right clean up to that seaweed line right there mm -hmm. so from there to 28 feet deep out there that will all be exposed at low tide we have a 28 foot tide cycle here on the big tides and that would all be land for probably another two to three hundred yards out here at low tide and about another I would say another hour from now it's going to be all the way up to them trees so imagine right there is 30 feet deep at high tide you go out that way sometimes you can go a half a mile before that 30 feet of water gets used up and you're still on land at low tide. These are the highest tides in the world. 28 foot. And on the big tides, they, they go to 30. And as you can see, that the, the I've been standing here for just a couple seconds, and already the water's coming in on me. Water's coming up on you. That was dry. Uh, it's extremely cold. It's dead. See, says, don't leave your car parked in a low water mark in Lubeck, Maine. That ain't good, and don't neglect it. A lot of times, you come down here, I can actually see something moving on the bottom out here right now. I just see a small shrimp or something moving out here. There's uh, uh, the, the squid are in right now, and they, they'll chase the heron right to the beach. They'll you can pick them up. The, the squid will come right up on shore. They'll beach themselves. Yes, they will. Yep. Right out here, you can't really tell. There is something right out there floating. That's the fog monster. And I can't tell exactly what that is. Could be a patch of seaweed or a log. But I just heard squid. I just heard them blow. They'll, they'll squirt water when they come up on the beach. So what's happening with the biology of the water right now? This water, well, it's warming all the time. We're getting different species of, of fish here. Right now, we have uh, black bass, which were extremely rare 10 years ago. Now you can go out and catch 14, 15, 16 inch ones all day long. Um, we have a lot of different species, redfish that are that are showing up in our coastal waters here, um, great white sharks. There's a seal rookery, if, if it was daylight, about where my light's pointing, there, there's a uh, island that, that the, the seals pop on every year. It, there's probably two to three hundred seals in adults and, and pups out there on the ledge in the middle of the bay and 
we've had some uh, great white sharks with with tracking systems on them and they'll come up and spend most of the summer right here in the south south bay which is probably oh uh, it's at least a five mile long bay and maximum feet uh, depth out here is probably about 130 feet and with some, a lot of shallow bars right full of baby seals right full of adult seals and now we have tagged great white sharks that are spending more and more time here all the time the, the water's warming everything's changing the tide the tides are getting higher things things are just uh and we got an we got an invasive green crab right there yeah that is an asian shore green crab in is. connecticut we have a problem with those and you know what we're doing with them killing them no we're deep frying them eating them as appetizers shell and all nice and crunchy put them in the asian dipping sauce yeah deep frying right in their shell well we have more of those i mean we are infested in them Right, and that's happening all throughout the East Coast. They're like fucking dead bugs in the pot. They were introduced as bait, <laughs> as bait fish for tautog, and now they're everywhere. Yeah. There's a, look at there's look at, how many are we seeing? There's another one right there. Not there's one see him? There. There's one there. There's another one there fighting with him. Mm -hmm. There's three right there, and they're gonna get into a tussle. And look at they've outcompeted the native. What are your native crabs? Take a toe. Uh, we have, yeah, yeah, we have chicken toes, and we have rock crabs. Rock crabs. You have blue crabs? No. So these are now competing for forage base, and they're eat with the native crabs, they're out competing them, and they're also eating the, uh, they're killing our clams. They're, they're killing the clams, they're killing everything. They go in on, they go in on the clam flats, and they bite the heads off the clams. And right. And they reach in the shell and, and pull them out and eat them. So, and you know, so... Have you are you started to fry them up and eat them with an Asian dipping sauce, a little a little uh, teriyaki? They uh, you know Portland's a foodie town, Portland, Maine. So uh, deep fry. Listen, Portland, Portland deep, fry. deep fry them whole in their shells, dip them just like that as an appetizer at your freaking restaurants. You, know? sure. you are. All right, here we go. We're gonna do a I want to show the people here. Can you see this, people? That is sand fleas. You can hear them. It sounds like snow. Look at that. That is how dense the biology is here. Look at it. They're all over me, and I'm loving it. All right, we're waiting for the seal. They're, 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 up, they're up there. They're not very far either. Some nights are, I mean, some, some nights are really, really vocal. They'll sit there and howl all night long. Yeah, but we do this all the time. We're just a low activity and high activity. Hi, everybody. You know, we're down here and down here. We're at night. It's raining. We showed you the biology. We showed you the tides. We've showed you all sorts of stuff. But we are squatching. And we're here with LH and KH, um, his wife, and uh, she's done some cool stuff for us. I'm going to do a howl. We're going to listen, and uh, we're going to tell you, man, let's watch a meter, right? We're going, like, into a seven. Down East Main is definitely squatchy, and I'm going to do a howl. What am I howling into as I point that way? What's the next point of land? Uh, the oh, Great Bay. Great Bay. So a squatch is going to communicate to another squatch. Sound, I'm a diver. Sound carries over water. If there's no trees or nothing, no wind, that's going to easily carry to the other side. Anybody else want to howl? K 
KH, you want to howl for us? You over here? Howl for us? Guide, give us a howl. Give him a second here, he'll howl. We can't get no Sasquatches, so we're going to try a coyote call. Coyote call. That is actually a wounded rabbit, is that correct? Yeah, or a land bear. Right, so that's actually a wounded young uh, prey animal. Um, why he calls that a coyote call is because that attracts predators. Camera person, you want to throw one out? Well, and what are these? We're hearing seagulls. What's going on? Why are they making noises at night? That's unusual for birds. Yeah, there's a, there's a predator somewhere around. Because of us. Yeah. We made all this crazy noises. Yeah. And they're, they don't like it. No. So we for sure got the seagulls going. Is that correct? Yeah, there's an island out here. It's called Razor Island. Okay. And Razor Island and, and Red Island just off this way here. There's, there's two islands and the, the gulls stay there at night. Birds don't it's, usually make, other than owls, very right. few birds make noises at night. I'm going to throw a call tap, see if we can get them going. I'm going to do a gull call. They definitely didn't like that, did they, guide? No, they did not like that one. Jesus, my feet are getting wet. You're getting wet. You know why? Because we're in the high sides in the world. We'll see you out there, people. We're on location. We're loving us with our guide here, LH, and his lovely wife, KH, who may or may not be related to said person. Um, but we're in the middle of the dark. Nobody's got any business out there at night, do they? Unless you, you saw the sand fleas. This is not the kind of place you would hang out at night and just sit on a little towel, is it? Not unless you like getting chewed apart by bugs. Will they eat you? Yeah, absolutely. Those sand fleas will eat you. <laughs> they absolutely We're on location down East Main and we will see you out there. We're looking for biology and monsters. Any sea monsters out here? Uh, the great whites, right? The, well, yeah, we, we, we got sharks. The great, we got more sharks here than people ever thought there was. So now that they're putting tags and stuff on them and, and actually proving it last year we had the first fatal shock attack in maine and fatal and and quite a long time yeah it's been a while yeah but we had one so hey let's step it up next year we want to see like four or five more we'd like to how many like like uh, amp it up like 40 percent more fatalities well, you know i figure some divers i'm know. a diver right Few more paddle boarders. Paddle boarders. Oh yeah, that's is that's a good forge base for a great weight. Well, that's the way I figure it. Right. <laughs> that's the way I figure it too. And then paddle around on a goddamn surfboard. I'll right, top heavy. Dog. By the way, you are top heavy. Yeah. You are not in the center of gravity. You fall over on a paddle board. There's a great weight. Do you know? Do you know the megalodon? Oh yeah. So megalodon. Did you know a megalodon is anatomically identical to a great weight? No, I didn't know Anatomically that. Anatomically identical. It's just 50 feet long instead of 20 feet long. Right. Huh. Do you know there's reports of them and them on cameras? No, I didn't. Do you think Meg could be out there? Uh, not here. It's a little too shallow. I think I think if there is any of them megalodons, they got to be in deep water. What do you think they're hunting? Architeuthis, the giant squid? I think they're hunting seals, uh, tuna. Orca. Could be. You're a mega you're gonna hunt an orca, right? You're gonna want something big. Mankeys. Nice. Porfish. We're hunting whales. Porpoise, mankeys. What about mermaids? Well, everyone hunts them. Jesus. Okay, so there we go. You know what we're gonna do? Do you believe in <laughs> the possibility that an ape could have went into the water and evolved in an aquatic ape? Do you believe that's possible? A sea ape? Yes. Well, 
I bought whales, whales migrated from land to sea. Why couldn't an ape have done the same? Do you think it's impossible? I bought sea monkeys one time there when I was go. a kid. We have confirmed sightings of sea monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> We're having possibly way, way too much fun here at CSIS tonight, but yeah, yeah, nobody's got any business hey, out here, right? We're, we're having a ball. We're, we're just, hey, we, we ain't see, we're, we're Ken Folk and ain't seen each other in a few years, so we're having a toddy right. and, and having some fun. But That's my brother. Come on That's down. Right. This is my brother. If you want to go on some kind of wild experience right. in the middle of the night. For the low price of... If you want to go out in the day and see some wild critters, come on come on up. We'll go pick some mushrooms. We'll go see a moose, a deer, a yeah. bear, something like that. So you know what I'll do for we'll the, the people at CSIS? I even had to get fingerprinted in dental background. Of Check course on. that. I'm going to want a DNA sample, <laughs> footprints, and some hair samples. We'll see you out there. We're out. Have fun. Come on up to Maine. Come on up to Maine. Here, Cal. Mm -hmm. Something big just, just fucking jumped out there or, or attacked something, broke water or something. So it's... There's a very large splash of Stripers don't do a lot of jumping. No. They do a lot of chasing. No, that, that, that wasn't a fish. That was that... Whale? No. No? No, that was... That was like probably a shot. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was big. Something really big. Getting a feel? Yeah. Get and the rookery. Well, all, all the seals are held up on land right now. Right. But the tide's coming up. So they may be getting pushed off into the water. They're going to have to swim around to get up on another rock or something. That's something to get them. Some, yeah. Something, something just fucking... Something big jumped out there. I mean, something big. I ain't talking just, you know, like Macro. 20, 30 pounds. I'm talking something. 800 pounds. Yeah. You hear that, Cesis? How do you know? How can you tell that's big? By the, by the sound of the, the water. It wasn't like a boom, you know, like it was a whoosh. Do these seagulls usually it, it make it? Wasn't, it wasn't like a... If, if there were whales or porpoises out here right now, we'd be hearing them coming up going... Breathing. Whew. Right? You don't hear them breach. All that you, was a well, fish. All you hear is them... That, that was something big that jumped that, that doesn't breathe there. Man, that's awesome. See, so you hear that? Can you say that again? Yeah, that was something big that jumped that does not breathe there. That, that was a monster you know, a, a, a shark uh, 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 something along that you, you know a shark maybe it's, big ass it's squid. not a whale it's nothing coming up and that's breathing that's, big that's ass squid a, a, big arcatuthus giant squid or anything like that but it was possibly a, a, a really big striper or, but my guess would it sounded to me like it was a freaking shark that just come up and hit something. Come I mean, from that, the that deeps was, looking was, up, hit that, the freaking prey, brought it out of the air and splashed it down so it was dead on impact. Yeah, it came up the... Ambush. Like I said, the, the, the tide's coming up so all the seals are on the rocks right now are getting pushed into the water. Where they're all, there's, there's, I mean, there's two or three hundred of them out there all on this big rock. Pretty soon... At high tide, they run out of land. There ain't enough land for them all to be on. Some of them have to be in the water. And that's when the predation, you know, kicks in. 